react india yeah so uh, i am shashwat i have been with thoughtworks for around 4 uh, years now i have been in the industry for around 8 years now i have been dabbling with web and tech for a while what we'll be doing over the next 20 minutes or so we'll try and understand react server components uh, what we'll be focusing on are the you know the concepts uh, more than the uh, the frameworks themselves what we want to have is a solid footing around react server components as an idea and uh, yeah let us see how the journey goes cool so what are the aims of the talk uh, i just want to get this uh, out in the open first uh, so you know we have our expectations from the talk very clear so we'll look at three parts uh, first is the when the history right uh, we will try and see when the actual worker conference came into being and also uh, uh, the kind of the motivations behind that which is the why uh why did we need react server components you know uh why uh why this is one of the most debated tech at least around the web sphere in in recent times and the how we'll have a peek under the hood we'll try and understand how react server components work um and hopefully by the end of the presentation we will you know be better informed about react server components cool so let's begin well so around uh, 2020 uh, the react team uh, live streamed this talk uh, which is uh, which which was titled data fetching with server components it showed uh, what the next generation of react is going to look like and as the title suggests it was focused mainly around data fetching right it was uh, under meta open source and we will have a look at this video for the next 20 minutes Okay, no, we will not. Uh, but uh, what we will try and do is, we'll actually, I have a clone of the repo that they had used to demo React Server Components. Right? Um, it's it's a it's a fork of the repo. Most of the code is consistent with uh, whatever is open source uh, by the Meta team, with some slight changes here and there. Right? So let us actually start with that. Right? Let us have a look at the demo uh, around how uh, an app can look, uh, which is using React Server Components. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, so this is a very simple note app. Uh, again, uh, very similar along the lines of what the, the Meta team had uh, demoed then. Um, it allows us to view notes. Uh, it allows us to create uh, notes as well, if I want. Uh, it allows me uh, basic search functionalities. Right? And uh, it allows me to edit some notes here. Right? So yeah. This is again um, markdown that is rendered on the browser on the client side, right? Um, and yeah, I'm able to do a basic search functionality here as well, and have able to have a bit of a preview about my about the content of my notes. Right? So uh, with this much, uh, because uh, almost all of us would be slightly familiar with React or around the web development landscape in general. Uh, we 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 would be dissecting this app, right? We would be thinking, how can I code this? How can I put a basic note-taking app, and you know, bring all of these components together? If if you are putting the component framework in perspective, you are maybe mentally, you know, thinking, okay, this might be a separate component search. Uh, how is edit working? And maybe edit, uh, you know, uh, is a separate component and things like that. So yeah, uh, basically the component model. But maybe uh, we are we are starting to break this into how I, we would be going around to code this, right? So yeah, we will be keep uh, we'll keep coming back to the demo again and again. So cool. That was mostly about the when, right? So they demoed this. This was around 2020, and um, somewhere around 2023 earlier, uh, React Server component spec was live, right? Uh, and if you go and read to the spec, it is a massive, uh, very informative document. And it is a dense document, like all of the specs. So now let us look at the why, the motivation behind, you know, uh, why React Server Components came into picture, how they have grown, right? So the first part, which is data fetching, which was also the title of the of the talk, right? So um, React in itself as a framework has never been very opinionated about data fetching. If we, uh, it has been both a blessing and a curse, but it has been again one of those points that kind of defines React, that you know. It has given rise to libraries. It has given rise uh, to frameworks. Each of them centered around how data fetching should be done. What is the correct way to do it? Right. But but there, there was never really an opinion from the React team, like an official opinion. Right. This was 
Uh, so React Server Components is one of the kind of the official opinions on how data fetching should be done in the modern infra, right? Second, the performance aspect, right? So this is, I think, one of the key parts around what is pushing frameworks uh, towards the edge more and more. So most of the modern, relatively modern bleeding edge frameworks, let's say Quick, or you can pick up your Astros, uh, even somewhere around Remix and Next, right? The aim is how can you get the most performance out of your app, right? Uh, you have lesser time for your user. You have lesser attention span of the users. How can you use the small amount of time that the user is giving you, blessing you with, to uh, grab their attention and, you know, for your site to work, which led to three, which is better user experience. Kind of one and two combined, but uh, the end result, the end motivation was that how can I build a React app that has the best user experience, considering all of the other challenges around React in general, which is the quantity of JavaScript and the tooling that it takes for even a normal developer to build a fully customized, fully performant app. Okay, so now this is uh, something that I've added. Uh, server components are rendered only on the server. Now, why have I added it? Uh, and I have a similar quote in one of my next slides is because I want us to repeat this, right? This is one of the things that we tend to forget. And it also uh, leads to a lot of pit, uh, pitfalls and errors when thinking about server components. So, you know, uh, even I will be repeating this. So I would like the audience to also repeat this mentally. Server components are rendered only on the server, right? So this is kind of a kind of a an axiom that we'll be going to for the next of the slides. Perfect. So uh, let us actually, unravel those two points that we discussed, right? One was data fetching and one was around performance, right? So let us look at data fetching first. So uh, we had a look at the note editor, right? So when I edit this, this is what I get. I get a, a nice note editor where I'm able to write markdown and get it live reflected on my client site, right? So this is our note component. If you see, this is how a server component looks. It is actually quite amazing, right? Uh, it looks like React, but React that is running on the server, right? So let us focus on a few lines here. First, just in terms of data fetching, first would be line two and line nine. So line two is a DB util. I'm actually fetching, I'm actually getting a library that is kind of an abstraction around my database, uh, data store operations. And line nine is where I'm actually fetching my note from my database, right? Uh, this is uh, this is beyond imagination. At, at least, uh, if if you are approaching React from a front end perspective, you are actually able to fetch uh, your notes directly from the DB, uh, and you are able to you know use it uh, with your React APIs and write React code. Right? One of the other aspects here is actually line six, uh, a function that is async. So Node component itself is an async component, but but components cannot be async, right? Uh, so Client components cannot be async. Server components can be async. But the bigger picture here is uh, line two and line nine, which allows us to directly get my data from my data store within the realms of React. Yeah. And then once I've gotten uh, line nine, I can use it on line 13 and 14. I can render my node title and node body, and I can do all of React stuff with it. Not quite all of React stuff. Perfect. So this is one of the other axioms, right? Other, other truths that we'll have to repeat ourselves. So uh, in terms of performance, uh, it has been kind of established that one of the basic uh, ways to get better performance out of your site is to ship lesser amount of JavaScript, right? So what we want is thinner bundles that are sent to the client. So how does server component address that? So uh, this is again, one of the parts where we, act we are actually rendering the markdown. So if you see this part where we have actually rendered out our markdown, right? This is a sample of the code that does that. But in an ideal client side application, I would be shipping out line two and three across, right? This would be a part of my client bundle. The server component does it differently, right? So instead of having two and three combine this quite a massive chunk of JavaScript, I say, no, just give me line seven. I am not going to send two and three. It won't be a part of my client bundle. What I need them what I need from them is actually the rendered output. And that is all I need. And that is fairly static and I can send it uh, uh, from the server. I can have this package just on my server and I don't want it as a part of my client buttons, right? So yeah, that is around performance. Cool. So with these two things, these two massive bits around data fetching and performance out of the way, 
let us have a look around a bit of how right how does react so how do react so components work and let's have a look uh, under the hood of react server components so uh, first up uh, the code that we saw and even uh, this would be something that you would be seeing across the general discourse which is our server and clients the same entity now uh, have they become one well they have not become one but uh, the framework in which we would have to think about react code has kind of unified now right uh, we would have our code that is co-located your server and client side code are are co-located but in terms of uh, server and client becoming one entity that is not quite the case we'll have a look at the examples as well second part and this is again uh, something that we need to be really careful about is rsc is an architecture it is a specification it does leave out a lot of open points about implementation um but uh, it does not give all of the solutions it it tells how to let's say do data fetching how to use client and server components but it does not let's say tell you how to integrate your bundles or tooling things like that cool so one thing i have felt is uh, when we are introduced to a tech right we kind of start drawing parallels we start drawing parallels okay what about php what about golang what about plain old javascript whatever client side components right so what i have done over the next few slides is i have compared i have compared the x server components with the tech that is already available right what we want to do is in trying to understand the the distinguishing aspects of what react server component is and how it is different from others i i hope we'll be able to understand the you know the nitty gritties of react server components at what makes it stand out as well so let's begin with the battles right so the first bit react server components versus client side components i think one of the first obvious bits around that right so uh, one thing is in terms of your react server components you won't be able to use any of the hooks that you might be aware of right so the use states and use effects and all of your use rest those are not applicable anymore because this is react code that is running on this server you are not really running this on the client and again i will be repeating this rsc runs on the server so the hooks that that you would be using on the client side you won't be able to use it on your server components second client ca components themselves cannot import server components directly so so once i have reached uh, a stage where i have client components they can only import client components again why is that so because server components only render on the server so once i have my client components being sent being shipped over to the browser uh, they uh, if they do have server components my my browser won't be able to handle that and finally client and server components can be interleaved right uh, point 3 is a bit bit obscure it is very hard to explain right so let me try better this is uh, picked from the blog by plasmic uh, which they have an excellent blog on uh, react server components they go very deep in that but this is a very nice uh, advantage and this is i think the distinct thing that sets react server components apart so the orange bits are my server components and my blue circles are my client components right now what this tree shows me is how a dom would look like uh, when once i started developing with react server components but what it also tells me is the the amount of control that i have so what it means is i can control where i need my server components and how deep in my tree do i need my server components it is not that my left subtree is entirely built out of client components i can combine my server components and client components and this is really the the you know the usp of react server components the fine grain control that it gives the, the the developers right so uh what does that mean in terms of interleaving of client and server components right uh let us have a look so if i do something like this here and let's look at the network call that goes through when i click on edit right so uh once i have clicked on edit uh you see uh the important bit that we'll be focusing on is the is editing flag here right so is editing is actually sent over the wire to my server and it tells me okay your is editing bit is true right now once i have sent that out what happens next let's see what happens next. so if you see uh i have line 4 as my note editor this is the exact component that we are seeing here the note editor component this is actually a client component right and uh, my props actually get the is editing part and when my is editing is true they actually ship out the note editor the client component over the wire right 
right? So the moment I click on edit, this prop becomes true and I ship it out directly over the web. Right? So, uh, so this means that I'm able to dynamically ship out client and server components depending on my prop change. Right? This is really powerful. So, so this goes back to how I can interleave my client and server components and I have absolute control on what gets shipped out. Right? Okay, I'll just click on done. Go back here. Perfect. One of the other obvious questions that we normally uh, run through is React Server Components versus SSR, which is server side rendering, right? So, what, how does it differ? So, first part is in terms of React Server Components, HTML is not sent over the wire. I know it might sound confusing. So, let's have a look at actually what does get sent over the wire, right? So, let's go back here and click on edit again. Mm, nice. We have the request. Hmm, that doesn't look like HTML, does it? Okay, so this is a serialized JSON format that React team has specifically come up with and modified to, to fit in the React server component model. This is very different from server-side rendering. In case of server-side rendering, what, what we would be expecting is HTML sent over the wire. What we do get here is not HTML. It is a JSON format that React specifically understands. It understands that there are client components here and that it needs to do certain stuff with it. So if we look at this, this is a node editor component, right? Uh, and what uh, we, we, yeah, we, we won't be focusing on all of the lines, but just the last two lines. So the node editor component gets shipped out. This is a part of my response, right? And this is where I'm actually uh, passing this as a symbol and saying, okay, please render node editor on the client. This is kind of distinguishing between server and client, and this is React doing its heavy lifting. But the bigger picture is it's not plain HTML. Second, uh, like we have covered, both are uh, solutions to different problems, right? React Server Components started with data fetching and performance, and SSR itself specifically addresses well, some of performance, but more around the rendering front. And it is also possible to combine the, the two. These are not opposite solutions. You, you are uh, fully allowed to combine React Server Components with server side rendering. Okay, now, uh, one other bit is, because I am able to have a JSON kind of a structure, what it does allow me is while I am fetching my data from the data store, I can serialize it and stream it. Right? So just a bit of tech heavy verbiage here is the uh, suspense boundaries that we have with React, right? So, so suspense essentially allows us to handle promises in React in a better way, right? Now this becomes incredibly powerful with React server components. Why? Because if I'm fetching some data and that data is taking a bit or taking a while and I'm still rendering some promises, I can wrap it in my suspense boundaries and then stream my data as I'm getting them. So you have the ability to you know, paginate data, you have the ability to stream data, and that is possible only because of the format that React team has stuck with. Yeah. Perfect. And maybe the last obvious set of questions, right? So how do React Server Components differ from Remix or Next or Hydrogen? And you can put any of your frameworks here. You can put your Astros or Quix and all of the fancy you know, uh, frameworks that are out there. So uh, one thing that we started off with as well, right, is React Server Components is a spec. It, is, it does not focus on the implementation at all. Right? Uh, so please remember that. So you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not an either or. Second bit, uh, the router. Uh, so the so uh, if we are uh, familiar with client side routing as well, and router itself as an entity, right? Um, in terms of React Server components, these are very powerful constructs now. So much so that Next, one of the frameworks that uh, adopted React Server component, had to come out with an entire router uh, which uh, handles React Server component. They had to build bake in the support for React Server component as a separate library, right? So the reason for that is React Server Components tooling aspect is something that has been left for the framework. React team has not really answered a whole lot of questions. Same thing around the bundlers. You will find uh, a Webpack-based implementation. Wheat has a PR that is raised, and Rollup has a PR that is raised to handle React Server Components. But because it is a spec, it needs to be implemented. React team has not provided any implementation around that. And they have asked the framework maintainers, you know, please go ahead and you know implement this for us. We have given you the spec. And what this means is, we we will end up having different implementations, right? 
So let's say Remix might have a very different take on React Server component with Next. And again, this would be a part of the general tech discourse where people would be uh, you know, comparing how Remix and Next works and why Remix might be better than Next or Next might be better than Remix and all of those debates. But the bigger picture is they are trying to implement the same thing. They are trying to implement a common architecture, but they might create abstractions for the user, which makes it easier for us to use React Server components under the hood. But the ideas that we just covered in terms of how React Server components work, how the components render themselves, and how you have fine-grained control over the interleaving client and server component, which is not quite possible with PHP and you know Ruby on Rails and those bits. Uh, uh, so that is an incredibly powerful con construct, which is specifically around React Server components. Everything else would be centered around the same. Um, yeah, so these are some resources. There are tons available, and there's a whole lot of unknown around React Server components as well. But uh, please go uh, check these out. Look at the GitHub spec, spec as well. It is incredibly well detailed around uh, what React Server components are and the limitations uh, around what they are trying to address. Yeah, and uh, that's what I had uh, for the talk. Uh,